Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be taking a little bit further in-depth look at the Ritual of the Damned and some uh, interesting combinations that I've come up with with some detachment ideas. So we're going to go through a uh, three detachments in this uh, to try and see if we can optimise and get a little bit more out of our Thousand Suns Marines playing pure Thousand Suns faction, no souping allowed and just to see whether we've brought anything into the game uh, even though I've done my sort of analysis of the Ritual of the Damned, I wanted to sort of break down a few potential good combos that could potentially, there's a lot of potential in this video, uh, help our Thousand Suns out against some of these top tier marine lists that are ruining everybody's day. So let's get straight into the video. So the first battalion I want to talk about is the Supreme Command Detachment. This features Araman and two winged demon princes. Uh, this is quite a common one, I think, from what I've uh, done on my research, uh, specifically for soup type uh, chaos armies. So anyone who's fielding things like resilient cheap death guard troops and so on, they might often put in this Supreme Command Detachment from the Thousand Suns. So what does this investment actually look like? It's 556 points uh, for just three models. Now the big key thing is they are all under 10 wounds, therefore they are immune from being targeted by most shooty things, uh, except for those uh, big squads of eliminators that you're finding around quite often. They do put out uh, seven psychic powers, potentially eight if you take a particular stratagem, they come with a 3 plus invulnerable save on Araman, a 4 plus invulnerable save on the two Demon Princes. And their output in combat is not to be sniffed at. It's 16 strength 7, AP minus 2, 2 damage attacks using the Talons from the Demon Princes. And 5 strength 6, AP minus 1, flat 3 damage from Araman's staff. Now that is providing that you do charge or you are charged to get the uh, Hateful Assault ability off. That also excludes Diabolic Strength. So taking a look at the psychic offence that this three model unit can put out, this, this uh, Supreme Command Detachment. Now I've taken here as an example the Cult of Magic, because I think that's probably going to be a mainstay of anyone trying to get decent output out of their Thousand Suns. This features Araman and the two Demon Princes. They have a Smite each, they have Doom Bolt, Bolt of Change, Astral Blast and Infernal Gateway across the board. This is the most amount of... Uh, mortal wound outputs that you can get. Adding in that stratagem I mentioned earlier for one command point for the Great Sorcerer to add in Infernal Gaze. This gives a whopping mortal wound maximum output of 37 mortal wounds from three models in a single psychic phase. That does exclude uh, Astral Blast splash damage which could potentially be two times the number of units that are within three inches of the Astral Blast target. But taking just one unit that happens to be nearby, uh, you know, a character supporting a unit, for example, you're going to get an average of about 20 mortal wounds out of these guys, which, which I can see why a lot of people are thinking 500 odd points for the three characters. Uh, putting out this is going to be pretty damn powerful. Now that is just taking the pure mortal wound output. That's not considering uh, unit buffs like uh, or debuffs like death hex and so on. This is purely just trying to work out what your maximum mortal wound capacity could be featuring the Cult of Magic. Now one thing I did want to talk about whilst in this subject of Demon Princes is how to keep a Demon Prince alive. Now this features taking a Magister for one command point, one of the new stratagems from uh, Ritual of the Damned. And that includes taking the Relic Hourglass of Manat from the Cult of Time. Now what this enables you to do is when your character is killed and he's carrying that Relic, you can bring him back to life on D3 wounds. Combine that with another psychic power of temporal manipulation that will regenerate another D3 wounds. So you can actually bring him back and then bring him back to almost to full strength. You know, at six uh, six wounds is the is the potential here. Now also we can add in a couple of other psychic powers to try and keep him alive as well. If you are going to be super offensive with this guy, and that is Glamour of Zinch and Weaver of Fates. One of which adds an extra uh, invulnerable save count, bringing your Demon Prince to a 3 plus invulnerable save. And Weaver of Fates for minus 1 to hit. Uh, very handy when, uh, when he is sort of out on his own and you're trying to be really quite offensive with him and throw him into the, uh, 
into the melee and you just don't want him to try and die really so uh, trying to keep him alive there's a few tips and tricks in here to try and, and do that for you the next detachment I want to talk about is the cheap battalion detachment this features three squads of ten cultists and two bog standard sorcerers this is going to set you back 296 points so just shy of 300 points for the cheapest battalion that you can get within the thousand suns now we are looking at pure thousand suns here there's no uh, no souping or anything like that this is trying to get the most out of a thousand suns pure codex detachment and and faction so if you are on the scrounge for five command points uh, this is going to be your cheapest way of achieving it now i don't own uh, 30 cultists myself uh, i do own 10 uh, which is why i have photoshopped the other two squads uh, but this is uh, when you're looking to try and create that uh, that five command point requirement that most armies really feed on is trying to get a cheap uh, cheap battalion in there for the five CPs whilst remaining uh, fully uh, battle forged. This is the way to do it. So I thought I'd bring that up in this video. The next detachment I want to talk about is something a bit more offensive, and that is what I'm classing as a resilient battalion. Now this is nearly a thousand points to achieve this. And it features two sorcerers, a large unit of 20 rubric marines, and two lots of 30 zangor. Now this uh, is going to rely on a couple of tips and tricks, which is what I'm going to try and explain now. So this really features the resilient squad, which is your 20 rubric A. Now they come in at 328 points. You can optionally add warp flamers or even soul reaper cannons to this. But 328 gets you 19 rubric marines with uh, inferno bolt guns and the Aspiring Sorcerer. What this relies on is for one command point using the new stratagem from the uh, Ritual of the Damned again, Risen Rubrique, which is gonna cost you one command point, but allows you to deploy that entire unit uh, outside of your deployment zone, nine inches away from the enemy deployment zone and enemy models. This gives you an option to stick these slap bang in the middle of the board, normally where there's an objective, which is quite handy. And if you get some cover as well, depending on the board layout, you are going to get yourself a net zero plus save. Now we know zeros and ones, you know, you can't roll a zero and a one always fails. But what this allows you to do is mitigate against AP minus one and AP minus two weapons. Especially those that cause only the one damage. Now one of the things that we are seeing in a lot of, uh, a lot of play is a lot of one damage weapons. Uh, from intercessor squads and so on uh, across those top tier space marine armies. And Rubrique do have the best save in the game, let's be honest. Uh, with uh, all his dust and in cover, giving that stack uh, gives you that uh, zero plus save. Now, as I said, ones will always fail, so you are going to be back pretty much on a two plus save. Given that a lot of armies now being forced into that tactical doctrine with bolt rifles, they're going to be on AP minus two for, from turn two and three. Yeah, you're going to be getting uh, your regular 2 plus save against those weapons. Now bear in mind we also have a natural 5 plus invulnerable save. We can buff that with indomitable foes for one command point which increases your invulnerable save on Thousand Suns infantry uh, including uh, Scarab Occult Terminators as well. That's now going to put you to a 4 plus invulnerable save and with some psychic buffs again the same as what we had with the Demon Prince, Weaver of Fates, Glamour of Zinch you can now get a 3 plus invulnerable save and a pretty much unbeatable 2 plus uh, armor save and then with Glamour of Zinch uh, that minus 1 to hit so this unit is going to stand still and then absolutely dominate whatever it can slap bang in the middle of the board so what is this large blobs output potential so again we're going to be using another command point for Infernal Fusillade which is again straight out of the Ritual of the Dam book which allows you to shoot twice now because your unit has been deployed there and hasn't moved you're now going to be getting four shots out of your bolt guns, out of those Inferno bolt guns. Add that with Veterans of the Long War for another command point straight out of the uh, uh, Thousand Suns Codex for another command point. Gives you plus one to wound. This is going to give you 76 strength four AP minus two shots at plus one to wound. That's not to be sniffed at. Now, one of the other options here is picking one of the cults for this uh, battalion. And that is the Cult of Knowledge, which can, with the right psychic power there from the uh, from the new book, is going to get you re-rolls on the, the ones to wound as well. So the damage output from this unit with 20 models is pretty, uh, pretty tasty, really, let's be honest. 
Meanwhile, uh, whilst those rubrics deploy at mid-board and control that area of the game, you're going to have your two squads of Zangors, which are the 30 strong ones. One of which you'll place in the Webway Infiltration. Again, another command point though, so uh, it's a little bit command point hungry. And what that will allow you to do is basically deep strike that large unit of 30 from turn 2. Your second squad of Zangor are going to be on the board in cover, uh, out of line of sight. And then you're going to use the Dark Matter Crystal, one of the relics on one of your uh, your characters. And that will allow you to throw that unit forward. Uh, it's not a deep strike, they do count and you can do that on turn 1. And you're going to throw that forward right into your uh, opponent's face. Adding in the Brayhorn to that unit of Zangor is going to give you an 8 inch charge. And then what we can do then is from turn 2, so while your opponent is dealing with the uh, the first wave of 30 Zangor, you're going to wait until turn 2, you can then drop in the second squad and potentially support that with Scarab Occult Terminators which have been sitting up in their Teleportarium Chamber. And then once they drop in, adding some more bolt gun shots, you can then uh, add in Cycle of Slaughter for a second command point to allow those Zangor to fight again. So there we go then guys, a post Space Marine Doctrine change where their um, Devastator Doctrine now has to be only in turn 1 and then forcing people into that turn 2, turn 3 Tactical Doctrine. Lots of uh, Intercessor Spam is going to be around I think, uh, lots of those AP-2 bolt guns. I think there's a few, few bits and pieces in the Thousand Suns with the Ritual of the Dam that could potentially help out and keep our guys alive. You know, they only have that one wound, that's the big key against... Uh, Primaris Marines with their double wounds these days, those aggressors with three, Centurions with four. What can we do to try and put out the pain, uh, try and mitigate some of the incoming fire and see if we can actually try and win some games? So there's a few bits and pieces from this video then. So we've got that Supreme Command Detachment again with Araman and two Demon Princes. We've got our aggressive uh, detachment our Battalion Detachment, 60s Angor, 20 Rubrics, and then the Sorcerers of your choice really subject to points. And then our Cheap Battalion to see if we can get some of those CPs. So these are these are three that I wanted to focus on in this video. I'm going to have another look at a few other options for a future video as well. I want to try and bring in the Mutalith Vortex Beast and see what additions that we can get out of that. And the Zangor Enlightened and see if we can come up with a few cheap but fairly aggressive but you don't mind if they die kind of units so I'm going to be looking at those Zangor Enlightened again my favorite little beast the Mutilith and see if we can come up with some other cool stuff uh, but as usual I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below what you think of these three detachments that I've talked about in here I know the Supreme Command one has come up a few times uh, in a lot of soup lists uh, but I'm interested to see what you think about the rubric spam now that uh, the uh, Ritual of the Dam book is here, giving those cool stratagems and a few of those cult abilities to try and keep them alive and output some more power. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below on that. But if you did enjoy this video and you are enjoying the channel, uh, don't forget to just generally, you know, like, comment and of course subscribe to the channel uh, so that you get all notifications of any uploaded videos. I do one video a week every Wednesday and uh, stick around if you don't want to miss it. But until next time, guys, I'll see you on the next video.